Hi and welcome to this video where I show you how I draw and paint a robin, so a European robin. Firstly, I begin by identifying the shapes in a picture. So there's like an oval shape for the head, a long rectangular shape for the neck, and then like a circular almost shape for the body, and then obviously the legs. Really long, thin rectangles, but the picture I was using didn't actually have the feet and the legs, so I had to um, improvise a bit later on. <laughs> Once you've drawn the basic shapes, you need to then start to line, uh, join the shapes up and make the slight adjustments and tweaks. So now I really study the shape of the robin, and I can see that the head isn't completely oval, it points up a little bit at the top, and I'm just changing, rubbing out. Um, drawing robin out and just adjusting and tweaking the shape of the robin as I go. I also look at the shape of certain things in comparison to other parts of the picture. So I look at the eye, I think, okay, how far is the eye from the top of the head? And I roughly draw a line in between and then I work from there. And the same with the beak. I think, okay, how far is the beak from the eye? And then I roughly draw that. Use a rubber if I need to, which I do in a minute, because the beak is actually a bit too thin on top. And then, yeah, so rub it out, adjust, and keep going. And just make those fine adjustments until you get the shape to a place where you're happy with. And then for the wing, I bring it out a little bit. I just make a slight adjustment. And then I'm drawing in the shapes inside the bird. So this is its red chest. It's like a V shape. Or more like a W shape for the chest. Again, I'm always comparing the shape to another shape. How far is it from, how far is that V shaped chest from the outer part of the body? And look, I'm, compa I'm comparing the bottom of the wing to the other wing, lining them up, making sure um, they line up perfectly. Now the feet, I the picture I had didn't have feet, so I had to think about, okay, how would it, this Robin's feet be positioned? So this is my first one, which I thought was okay, but then I was like, it looks kind of weird. Um, it looks like it's got cramp in its feet. So I was like, I think, I think it might change. So at the moment, once I've drawn like the background ledge part, I decide to actually just change two or three toes and then perch the robin on a branch but also another thing to check is the length of the legs have you got the length of the legs right compare the length of the legs to the body how much longer are they i mean if you really are struggling you can get a ruler out and measure the picture get the picture to the size you want and then measure the different parts to help you numbers never lie because sometimes i measured parts think no way is that that far from this part of the picture and it, it is so draw your basic shapes tweak and refine the outer part of the shape look at shapes in comparison to other shapes on the bird so the eye in, how far is the eye from the beak how far is the eye from the top of the head and so here we go this is how i changed the feet so i just got rid of some toes and perched a bird onto a thin branch But lots of rubbing out, you can see I'm always changing and tweaking and refining until I get to the shape where I'm happy with. Once you've done that, I now I'm going to do a wet and wet technique. So I'm applying clean, fresh water onto my bird, just mainly on the chest part. And then I'm mixing some cadmium red and cadmium yellow to get this really vibrant orange colour on the chest. And I'm pretty much putting that everywhere on the chest. I might leave some mark some white spaces for highlights and then i'm getting a darker tone i believe i use cadmium red and a little bit of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow uh, for the darker areas so i'm already i'm getting this gradient of color from dark to light because don't forget the the robin's belly is rounded so to create that effect obviously the part that's sticking out a little bit more it's going to be a different color from that that doesn't so I'm just playing around with colours here. I'm creating darker tones of this orange and I'm creating lighter tones. Again, if I want to make the colour lighter, I can simply just add more water to it, which is quite a common thing I do. Now for the body, for the shading, I'm using Burnt Sienna and Windsor, um, oh, sorry, an Ultramarine Blue. And 
and just pay attention to where the darker areas are and apply some of the paint. I did a little bit of wet and wet on this, I remember the um the beard I'm painting now and just apply some of the colour. But I think the water dried really quickly or I just didn't put enough water on so it didn't really create that beautiful wet on wet effect like it did on the uh, red chest. <laughs> so colours here, there's so many colours on a European robin. They look quite simple, but obviously the chest is quite vibrant. So getting those colours right. So for the chest I use cadmium red, cadmium yellow some Elysium Crimson and Burnt Sienna and I did use a little bit of my grey and just to darken certain areas so to make my grey I use ultramarine blue and so French ultramarine blue hue and I use in combination with Burnt Sienna and you can play around the concentrations of the paint and the dilution to get the effect you want. Now on the left side of the robin I'm painting in the brown the brown <laughs> leaves the brown wing for that I used um a nice brown called burnt amber in combination with my grey just to darken it ever so lightly. Did I use some lamp black? I might have used a little bit of lamp black for some really dark areas such as the eye. Now I spent far too long on the eye. I don't know why. This I hadn't painted in a long time and I think I was feeling a bit rusty and I was getting so frustrated with, with the eye. I said to my partner, I can't paint anymore. And you know, we all have those moments. But um, I think it turned out okay. So wait until the end because I think it turns out okay. It'd be interesting to see what you think. So for the eye, I used the grey I made, the French ultramarine and the burnt sienna, but I also used a little bit of cerulean blue for some lighter areas, and I used a tiny bit of lamp black just for some really, really dark areas that I just couldn't create a dark enough grey. I mean, if I had more time, I probably could have created a much darker colour, almost black. I've done it before and it's so much better. When you create your own blacks, they're a million times better compared to the blacks that you get in the, the watercolour set. The reason why I would say that the very the colours, the blacks that you make, the blacks and the greys that you make by mixing colours together can be so vibrant and just amazing and because you have different properties of different paints so for example um, ultramarine blue is a granulating pigment so when you mix and burnt sienna is slightly gran granulating as well but not so much as french ultramarine so when you mix french ultramarine blue with burnt sienna what happens is so interesting they mix together beautifully and then when they dry because French ultramarine is so granulating, the pigment actually separates slightly and you get such a beautiful effect. It's so wonderful. I love using those two colours for a sky. It's absolutely stunning. So for the part I'm painting now, I use so the French ultramarine with the burnt sienna to create those greys but then it is slightly blue I do find robins have a slightly blue and almost like a like um what's the purple called violet sort of almost like a mauve sort of colour to it so I do like to use a bit of cerulean blue on the edge of the robin and sometimes I like to put some purple maybe I'll make my own purple by mixing cadmium red and french ultramarine um, sometimes I think there's like a hint of purple. I try not to go overboard. I mean, I love playing with colour. There's so many different colours. If you really study the image, there's a ton of colours. Um, but sometimes you can go OTT and I've done that mo multiple times. <laughs> For the part I'm painting now, um, it's quite dark right now. I'm definitely using Elysium, Elysium <laughs> Crimson. Um, but it's quite bright on its own. It's quite a, um, it's a cool pigment. So I needed to make it a little bit warmer. So I added a little bit of burnt sienna to the Elysium crimson hue and a tiny bit of the grey that I made um, just to darken it a bit. So here you can see I've really added the pigment now. So that's definitely got uh, Elysium crimson in it with uh, burnt sienna just to give it more of an earthy tone because I don't want it to be too bright. 
and yeah I'm just playing around trying to as best as I can match the the colors on the bird's chest adding in a tiny bit of orca yellow as well because orca yellow is quite an earthy color so it goes brilliantly well on the robin in multiple places so I'm just using a lifting technique I you'll see me multiple times lift out color with my brush um, and lift out color with tissue paper so especially on the eye because I do work on the eye too much <laughs> so to lift out color you need to clean your brush completely dry it and then the paint has to be wet obviously already and then you put your dry clean brush onto the paint that's already wet and it's and the, the dry brush will soak up the paint and it'll actually remove the paint from the paper but you have to be careful because some pigments are staining so for example cerulean blue i believe is staining so on the edge of the bird where i like to use some blue if i added too much blue and i wanted to remove it with my brush it wouldn't really come off very well it would stain the paper so learning the properties of colors are so important like like some are granulating some are staining some are transparent some are opaque there's you need to know how the colors react together you need to know how they react to the paper because if you want to lift color up some colors you can't lift up because they'll stain the paper so learning the properties is really really important I believe cadmium red stains a little bit as well. Don't quote me on that one, but I think it does. And I'm using a, a lot of cadmium red on this robin. So I'd be really, really careful. And as you can see around the eye, I've actually lifted a lot of the pigment around the eye, but it's slightly stained. And I believe it's slightly stained because of some of the pigment I used. But yeah, as you can see, like like working on the eye so much because the eye just it's so important to get the eye as accurate as you can um it just it makes the picture look more realistic if you can capture capture the character in the eye so i would spend time studying eyes and playing around with the different lights in the eye and the different colors to produce the effect that you want um i reckon it's a worthwhile skill to master So I don't tend to just work on one area. I have done in some paintings, but for this robin, I tend to work from one end to the other. If I've got the colour on my brush that is on a different part of the bird, I'm going to use it instead of wasting it. So I'm just using a really small brush here. So the brush sizes I used, I believe this, is a, this one is a four. I believe I use a eight or a ten. Um, to apply the water for the wet and wet technique uh, this one is a four I'm using right now and the black one is a three over zero so a really small one so yeah a range of different brushes being used um, adding in those details those feather details if I've used the word fur by the way please ignore me I mean feather <laughs> Um, it's important to not go over the top on the bottom half of the body where it's more white. Um, but I do need to add more pigment onto the side I'm on now, so on the left side, like so. <laughs> it's also really important to blend that red chest into the whiter feathers. Because if you don't, it looks jagged and just doesn't look right. So here I'm using some cadmium yellow and I'm blending in the red chest into the white fur and then I just add more water to that yellow I've added and just dilute it out and it, it creates like a really nice gradient. So work on that as well. Work on blending the red chest into the white fur uh, feathers and you do that by um you can add water to your brush and just um, blend in the colours. So the great thing about watercolours is when they dry and it doesn't look right or you want to do more blending, absolutely fine. You just add more water and you can move the paint. So that's the great thing about watercolour. If you add water, 
it will allow you to move it around a bit more. It's not like acrylics. Once acrylic dries, it dries and you can't do anything about it. Whereas with watercolour, once it's dried and you're not happy with it, you can lift the paint out, you can blend it a bit more. It's, it's so versatile. It's, it's a fantastic medium to use. So I'm using more of that crimson, um, that Elysium crimson with the burnt sienna on the chest, really defining that red part there. And for the feet, I believe I use a little bit of like really diluted cadmium red with some burnt sienna. See, I'm using a lot of burnt sienna to add more earthy tones because I feel like the cadmium red and the cadmium yellow and the Elysium crimson are too vibrant, too bright on their own and I need to darken them with burnt sienna and sometimes the grey that I make as well. You can see I'm going back and forth blending, mixing, blending, mixing colours, adding more colour, taking colour away. Um, I must admit I felt a little bit frustrated with this painting but I'm actually really happy with how it turns out but there's times I was like what is going on? There's just sometimes you just, I don't know what it is, it's just not going smoothly I did get up at five o'clock and I started painting around half five ish so maybe it was a bit early I don't know but <laughs> yeah it turned out okay um but yeah it, it wasn't the most enjoyable painting happy with how it turned out wasn't the most enjoyable painting felt a bit stressed I think I was trying too hard um but yeah it, it happens so for the brown wing, I think I actually did add a tiny bit of lamp black to the bottom. Um, I mixed it with the burnt amber, which is the brown, and just darkened it ever so slightly because it's quite dark there. And the same with the tail, I didn't add enough darkness. So just a tiny bit of lamp black, just to darken it a bit. You could make your own black, make it darker. If you can, I would recommend it. If you've got the time to, I would recommend it. But if you if you don't, if you don't have much time like I didn't, then that might be why. Also, that might be another why of way. That might be another reason <laughs> as to why I was feeling a bit overwhelmed because I was trying to get it done in a certain amount of time and it definitely took me longer. I think it actually took me like an hour or so, a bit longer than I had predicted. There's me turning the page around. I I'm just like, I always turn the page around to, because with painting, you need to make sure you get the brush, the uh, direction of the feathers on the bird accurate, because if you don't, it's not going to look very good. It's not going to, it's, it's going to look quite flat. So I tend to always rotate my paintings around because it's easier to get a certain direction of the feather in that way. Um, but for you guys, I'm trying really hard not to move it around so much. And I, I think that was the first time that happened. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, that's pretty good for me. <laughs> so again, I'm using that Elysium Crimson and Burnt Amber just to darken around the beak. So the, the Robin's actually got like some insects in its mouth. I'm not sure what they are. But um, that's always an interesting feature to add, which I quite liked. For the branch, I just used... Hell, I don't know. I just used some burnt amber, a little bit, of, um, a little bit of my grey. I made some French ultramarine. I think I put another colour on there, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Sometimes with branches, I add um, if I make a green. So I would use a cadmium yellow and French ultramarine to make a green. And I would sometimes add that to a branch, or I might add some Elysium crimson. Um, I just think it makes it look a bit more interesting, really. Now, what I've I've done with my brush is I've, I've I've wet it and then I've slightly dried it and flattened it. So you can see the brush is quite flat. This is size four. The brush is quite flat. And by doing that, you separate the bristles and it creates this like spiky effect. And when you put it over the um, bird, it creates these really really fine small lines these sm small feathers it looks wonderful i love that effect so i wet my brush slightly dry it spread the bristles apart and it creates such a lovely fine look around the feet adding some more um shadows shadows are so important get busy with creating your own blacks and your own greys you're really 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 important 
Uh, but yeah, adding the shadows um, is a good idea. It makes it look more realistic, I think. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this painting. I hope you learnt lots of tips. Thank you for being here with me today and have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.